Welcome back to the channel, Racer X here. And in today's video, I want to do a comparison for you between the 2024 Mustang GT, the newly revised S650, and the 2024 incoming Charger Daytona. Makes for a bit of an interesting comparison, seeing as how everybody thought that the Charger Daytona was going to be an EV. And of course, we know a naturally aspirated fire breathing V8 in the Mustang. But new spy photos, they're out there on the internet, they're circulating everywhere so I thought I would weigh in on this today it seems that the new charger may actually have a gasoline powered engine as well so we will talk all about that if you guys are brand new to the channel please do me a big gigantic favor hit subscribe you can find that right over here only 21% of you guys watching this video at home are subscribed to my channel and it costs absolutely nothing with that said off we go My partners over at Dream Giveaway are doing an epic contest right now on a two-car giveaway, both of them Hemi-equipped, an old-school and a new-school offering, a 1971 Charger Super B and a 2023 Charger Hellcat that has been converted into a Hell B. And boy, these things look absolutely fantastic. And right now, if you guys enter my code, RACERX, you get double the entries for the same amount of money. So go check out Dream Giveaway. Their website is absolutely amazing. They're doing an awesome giveaway on a Demon right now as well. I've already entered for both of these two cars. I can't wait to see who wins. Matter of fact, if one of my subscribers wins one of these contests, I mentioned to you guys that I would do a dedicated video on you and your brand new car. I absolutely would love the opportunity to do it. So guys, if you haven't entered already, go to Dream Giveaway, enter Racer X, and enter to win. And I hope one of you guys uh, gets to do a video with me. It has been a full year and a half since Dodge started teasing the 2024 Charger Daytona. And of course, uh, August of last year at their Speed Week event, they finally showed us a prototype of the car. Everybody kind of got excited about it, but then there was a whole bunch of kickback. Why is this thing an EV? Why does it sound like somebody stepping on a cat's tail? <laughs> We didn't really understand much about the horsepower numbers. And a year and a half later, in terms of the 800 volt system, the Banshee system, we still don't know what the horsepower numbers on that car are gonna be. Now we do know what the horsepower numbers are gonna be on the two lower level trims. They kind of have an entry level, they have like a mid-level, and then they have the 800 volt Banshee system. And then you have direct connection upgrades for each one of those cars. And they're basically just kind of over the wire type upgrades, supposedly. But everybody was under the impression that Dodge would have nothing to compete with Ford and their naturally aspirated V8s that they were going to continue to make in their S650 in both the Dark Horse and the GT. Who knows? We may actually see a uh, Shelby version come out later. So we just have the Hornet and then we have the Charger EV. So is Dodge planning to do anything to compete with the Mustang, especially for the folks out there that really love naturally aspirated V8s? Quite some time ago, the CEO of Dodge, Tim Kaniskis, actually hinted at the fact that the 2024 Charger Daytona could be a dual offering platform, meaning it could be offered both as an internal combustion car and an EV. And I thought that was a little bit weird. I just didn't see how that would make sense financially. Um, it has to be incredibly hard to do that, seeing as how EVs are just entirely different than gasoline powered cars. I mean, the way the air flows through the car, especially in the front of the car, if you look at how the uh, the Dodge Charger Daytona is shaped in the front, it really lends itself more towards an EV. I don't see how they could get enough air in the front of that to make sense of it. Um, there's no fluids moving through the car on an EV. The batteries have to go up under the bottom of it and it has to be reinforced. They're very heavy. I mean, so many differences between these two cars. But the new spy photos show us something that I was not expecting you can see a legitimate trans tunnel in there. And, you know, that's going to be consistent with internal combustion offerings. You have to put a big old transmission in there to kind of get the power to the wheels. And that's what we see here. There are a few other subtle things on that shell. I mean, it's, there's no question about it that it is the 2024 Charger Daytona shell. And it does look like that shell would accommodate a gasoline-powered engine. 
Many of you are aware I've been talking about it at length. I always felt like Dodge was going to give us a gasoline powered something. I just wasn't sure what it was going to be. I had my guesses. I thought that they were going to take the Challenger and kind of give it a refresh, more modern, kind of keep that retro look, but a lighter chassis, more modern engine that's lighter, just take a lot of weight out of the car. All things I feel like would be really good things. Um, or they were going to have a brand new Cuda, something like that, but they would give us another two door offering to replace place the Challenger if they weren't going to redesign the Challenger. I did not think they were going to put a gasoline engine in the 2024 Charger body. That was a huge shock to me. I do want to touch on something else just really quick because I've seen a couple other influencers sort of put it out there. I saw one uh, publication put it out there as well. And some people seem to think there's a possibility that a Hemi may actually go in the 2024 Charger uh, Daytona. And that just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. There's a reason the Hemi engine is going away. And if you understand the design of the Hemi, the true Hemi, all the way from back in the day, it is a fully half moon hemispherical head, which actually makes really good power, but is not very carb compliant. And as time has gone on and Dodge and Jeep Chrysler Ram, as they have really tried hard to make these engines more compliant, obviously with the new laws, all that kind of stuff, they have become less and less of a true Hemi. Now we're at the point where they just simply can't meet emissions with the Hemis at all. So unless they're going to throw a completely revised uh, V8 in these cars, which I don't suspect is going to happen, they are going to get the Hurricane, the twin turbo inline six. And if you look at a vehicle like the Grand Wagoneer from Jeep that's already out there, the uh, the 6.4 liter Hemi V8 is actually the lower tier offering. The upgraded engine is the 510 horsepower Hurricane. And that engine is actually way more capable than the naturally aspirated uh, V8. I've talked about it at length, but I just kind of want to just put it out there for consumption that it is extremely unlikely that we see a revised uh, V8 for the reasons I just stated. Here's where the comparison gets a little more interesting between the 2024 Mustang GT and the 2024 Charger Daytona, because if you have them both being internal combustion engines, despite one being a turbo inline six and the other a natural aspirated V8, it's a little more likable for your true performance enthusiasts, especially those guys that just simply hate EVs because EVs don't make any sound and they're so different. And yeah, I get that part of it. But in terms of the Mustang, a lot of people are a little bit underwhelmed with the performance of that car. I've seen a lot of guys go out on the track thinking those cars would run like mid to high 11s and they're running like mid to low 12s. And truth be told, that car is actually 200 to 250 pounds heavier than its predecessor in the S. 550. So yes, it makes a little more horsepower, about 36 more horsepower, but it's not really showing in the quarter mile times and on the roll races and all that kind of stuff because the car is just heavier and the dark horse is even heavier than the Mustang GT is. And then you look at, say, a new uh, revised 2024 Charger and you've got a uh, chassis that is much lighter. You've got an engine that's much lighter and more modern. You have a more tunable engine. So if you're able to get that vehicle down below 4,000 pounds, which I think would be very easy to do, despite the fact that it is an inline six, if you are a diehard Dodge guy, a diehard like V8 person, would you pick an inline six Dodge that looks like your traditional Challenger, just maybe a little revised, but it's much lighter, it's much more capable, it's much more tunable, or would you rather go over to Ford and still get a naturally aspirated V8 that isn't exactly setting the world on fire, but it still sounds great, and they made some great upgrades to the S650 platform, that is the conundrum we're in right now, right? So would you rather go with the Dodge? The fact that Dodge is still trying to put out something that is gasoline powered. And I realize it's kind of a gateway type car, but would you go for that? Here is my thought on this, and you guys know me, I'm a drag racer, I'm an all-around performance enthusiast, but if it's fast, I'm willing to drive it. As a matter of fact, I would love to get a hold of the new Banshee just to drive it and give you my driving impressions. I realize so many of you guys hate EVs and I get it, but guess what? If it's really, really fast, I still wanna go try it out. And I have an appreciation for four-cylinder cars, six-cylinder cars, eights, all the way up through the Lamborghinis. I mean, I if it's fast, guys, I'm willing to give it a shot. And I think about the possibility of a 
hurricane equipped 2024 Charger. I mean, we know it makes 510 horsepower in the Grand Wagoneer. There is no reason at all to think that they wouldn't put it out there making like 525 horsepower, a lot more than the current Scat Pack at 485 horsepower. And the engine is not even breathing hard to do that. I do feel like they'll give us a lower level trim that's probably the Hurricane 4 with the turbo in it, uh, which we already have in the Hornet. But um, this particular engine will be very, very capable, very tunable. I feel like this is going to be a car that weighs less than 4,000 pounds. That's just what I feel. And if you were to line this car up, keep in mind, this car will most likely be all wheel drive as well against a 2024 Mustang GT. I already know which car will be the faster of the two cars. Now, some people will say, well, it doesn't really matter how fast because the Mustang is going to sound better. And there most definitely is an argument for that because this thing will not sound like a V8. I've heard a lot of people uh, kind of chime in and say the Hurricane sounds absolutely terrible. They're uh, talking about putting the Hurricane in the new TRX for 2025 because it is so darn capable. Kind of going that same route as like the Raptor with Ford. But um, if you line the two cars up, there's no doubt in my mind which one will be the faster of the two. Um, so I would absolutely be willing to try out a 2024 Charger with like a 520, 530 horsepower Hurricane in it. I think it would be a blast to drive. And that really is the whole point of this video. It makes for a very interesting argument, especially for you hardcore Dodge guys out there and you hardcore V8 people out there. Would you rather go out and buy a Dodge, even though it's a Hurricane inline six, if it's faster, if it's all wheel drive, if it leaves the competition in the dust, and if it's about the same price? Or would you simply rather stay with a V8 and go buy a Mustang instead? It makes for a really interesting conversation. You guys let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'd love to hear it, and I will catch you on the next one. So until then, Racer X.